Beneath the idyllic facade of Ohio's rolling hills and picturesque landscapes, a sinister reality festers. Prepare to be unnerved as we venture into the heart of darkness, where seemingly charming small towns harbor chilling secrets and unspeakable horrors. From unsolved murders that haunt the community to unexplained phenomena that defy logic, these towns conceal a chilling underbelly that will leave you questioning the very nature of evil. Newbury Airplane Boneyard. In Newbury, Ohio, resident Walter Saplata hosted a collection of military aircrafts from the 50s, 60s, and 70s. Though often called an airplane graveyard, Walter would have preferred the term sanctuary, as he was saving the aircrafts from being turned into scrap metal. The sanctuary featured approximately 20 stray aircrafts that Walter collected from his scrapyard job in Cleveland, junking thousands of warplane engines that were declared surplus, according to his son Wally Saplata, in a November 2000. 2007 issue of Air and Space magazine. Walter used to open his property to the public, but in recent years, the aircraft boneyard has been kept private. He passed away in November 2010, and today it is unclear what remains of the aircraft graveyard. Number 9. Giaga Lake Amusement Park What was once the world's largest theme park is now an overgrown land of decaying roller coasters, empty concession stands, and abandoned ticket booths. In 1925, the park cemented its place in a amusement park history when the Big Dipper roller coaster was built. At the time, it was the largest roller coaster ever built, but soon tragedy struck. Following all of its success, the park experienced some setbacks. In 1942, the park was hit by a tornado, six people were injured, and the park experienced a lot of structural damages, around $50,000. Further tragedy struck in 1952 when a massive fire engulfed parts of the park, destroying many key features of the park, including the famous dance hall, the theater, the roller rink, and the bowling alley, amounting to $500,000 in damages. From 2000 to 2004, the park was expanded and became Six Flags Ohio. From 2004 to 2007, it became known as Giagua Lake again under the ownership of Cedar Fair. But on September 21st, 2007, Cedar Fair announced that the park would not be reopening and it has been abandoned ever since. Number 8. Cincinnati's Abandoned Subway In the 20th century, Cincinnati decided to build a subway system after canals quickly became even more of a nuisance than they had been when they were bringing in trade. The plan was made in 1912 to build a 16-mile rapid transit rail system in a loop around the city, with a branch undergoing and heading downtown. More than 80% of the people of Cincinnati said yes to the new railway, but work on it didn't start until after World War I on January 28, 1920. Despite several delays, the two-mile underground portion of the subway was completed in 1923. Proposals came and went in the 30s, but none were implemented. A 1948 study finally ended the Cincinnati subway for good, though efforts to do something with the tunnels have been constantly ongoing for more than half a century. Ideas have included a bomb shelter, a shopping and nightlife district, a massive wine cellar, and more rapid transit. The latest proposal is for another subway. I-75 was built, destroying a large segment of the underground passage, but one of the city's best kept secrets is the fact that sections of the original subway still remain, including all four of the stations put in during initial construction. Today, all these passages are sealed off and they are used by Cincinnati Waterworks only. Most of the entrances have been gated or concreted over. Now, access is both illegal and extremely difficult. And no, people, this is not a challenge. Number 7. Chippewa Lake Park Tucked away in the Medina County, there's a rusted, lost, forgotten Ferris wheel. What was once Chippewa Lake Park is now just a few piles of amusement park ruins and the lone Ferris wheel. From 1878 to 1978, the amusement park was a popular, thriving destination for family entertainment. It closed after the final owner, Continental Business Enterprises, closed it due to lack of attendance. After the park's closure, its rise and structures were left largely untouched and unmaintained for over 40 years. Today, remnants of it creepily stand abandoned, rusted, and long forgotten. And Fun fact, in 2008, a cast and crew from Los Angeles filmed the horror film Close for the Season there. Number 6. Kerr's Run Colored School This schoolhouse for Black American children is one of the oldest remaining in southeastern Ohio. Currently, it's boarded up and overgrown with brush. The school educated children from the 1st to 8th grade, including James Edwin Campbell and James McHenry Jones, first and third presidents of what is now West Virginia State University. The school remained in operation from the late 1880s through the early
early 1900s, and in 2007, a historical marker was added to the school site. The sign briefly documents the history and legacy of the school. Now, the school is right beside an old church, and you can visit outside, but you shouldn't try to enter either building as they are in unsafe condition. Number five. Franklin Castle. Rumors about the Erie Castle began to surface after multiple deaths occurred in the Tideman family while living in the mansion. Hans, the father, allegedly tore down another house on the property where four of his children had died. His first wife, Louisa, died inside Franklin Castle in the 1890s, and he would eventually bury three more of his children and his mother. Since then, the location has been the site of mysterious hauntings. A family with six children called the Romanos had moved into the house, and on the day they moved in, two of their children said they'd encountered a crying girl in white on the third floor. But when Miss Romano investigated, no one was there. Soon, the family started hearing haunting organ music and heavy footsteps. Two of the older Romano children woke up one night to find something yanking blankets off their bed, and Miss Romano once awoke to find herself screaming on her bedroom floor with an unseen presence screaming beside her. A priest advised the Romanos to move out, and in 1974, they did, but the hauntings didn't stop when they left. From there, the house was sold again and again and again. Each new occupant reported strange occurrences like passing through odd vapors, hearing a child crying, or seeing a woman in black standing in the window. Unfortunately, this house is privately owned, so you cannot go and explore all the spookiness, but there is a lot of rich history here. Number 4. Warner and Swayze Observatory The Taylor Road Observatory was gifted to the Case School of Applied Science in 1919 by the Warner and Swayze Telescope Company. The original building was a domed tower construction with a powerful telescope that took advantage of the relatively undeveloped Cleveland sky that was at the time, much more free of light pollution. The site continued to develop in the decades, growing with more buildings and facilities, but unfortunately by 1950, the growth of the nearby city was shining too much ambient light into the night sky, and the telescope had to be moved to a new location in Arizona. The Taylor Road facility continued to conduct astronomical research in the 1970s, but the site was completely abandoned in 1982. Vines and decay accumulated on the walls as time and neglect took their toll on the observatory. However, it was finally repurchased in 2005 by real estate mongol Nair al-Mahid, who planned on returning the site into a luxury home. Unfortunately, his renovation didn't happen because in 2007, he was convicted of fraud and sent directly to jail. Today, the observatory continues to stand off Taylor Road, and it's best not to trespass and enter the building though because the area is unsafe. Number 3. The Peters Cartridge Company The Peters Cartridge Company was once an integral part of the local munitions production industry, but now the factory is abandoned. Built in the 1860s, the large building complex was established to support the Peters Cartridge Company. The factory began producing shot and cannonballs for the Union Army during the Civil War, and then continued to produce American munitions into the 1950s. The factory had a lot of accidents, though. In 1890, several train cars loaded with gunpowder Powder collided and exploded, ending the lives of 20 factory workers. There were a number of fires and machinery accidents as well, leaving employees maimed and physically disabled. Before the factory finally closed, the site was repurposed to press vinyl for Columbia Records, but eventually nothing was made of the tall brick buildings. As the factory buildings are extremely decayed, local police supervise the Peters Cartridge Company closely. Urban exploration is not advised, as floorboards are rotten and elevator shafts are empty in the buildings. Number two, Helltown. Yep, you heard that right. Why anyone would want to go to Helltown with a name like that, I have no clue. Founded in 1806, Boston Village, aka Helltown's claim to fame was that it was standing as the oldest village in Summit County. Boston's relatively uneventful life took for a turn for the worst in 1974, when the National Park Service decided that Boston Township would be the new home for a new national park and began buying the properties of its longtime residents. The MD homes were boarded up and adorned with U.S. no trespassing signs. But then the government quickly fell behind on its plan to create the park and the village sat neglected. The hellish aura of the area only continued to grow when rangers visiting the site became ill and covered in rashes. It was soon discovered the dump was highly polluted with toxic chemicals improperly disposed of. Also in the village there is a church which is said to have been built by Satanists complete with upside down crosses. There's an abandoned bus that is said to be host to 
the lingering ghost, and maybe the most outlandish of all, there is talk of mutants who are created by the chemical spill, including a monstrous snake known as the Peninsula Python. And coming in at number one, Lima Tuberculosis Hospital. The Lima Tuberculosis Hospital was a tuberculosis sanatorium built in 1911 to deal with the leading causes of death in the United States in the early 20th century. Opening in 1911, it held 24 beds originally and was remodeled in 1927 to hold 158 beds. The capacity changed to 138 patients after an additional remodel occurred in 1957. The hospital was then renamed Ottawa Valley Tuberculosis Hospital in 1960, and by 1970, it was nearly empty. In 1972, the use of the second floor was shuttered and the entire hospital closed its doors in 1973. While the hospital was winding down operation on January 10th, 1972, it was agreed that the hospital would be transferred to the Allen County Board of Commissioners. Because of its relatively remote location and the use of hard to clean up substances such as asbestos in the construction of the original 1911 building, the city of Lima did not prioritize demol the city of Lima did not prioritize demolition of the building. It's rumored to be haunted as well, and around Halloween of 2020, a large surge of trespassing at the site occurred, which led to an increased police presence and crackdown on trespassers. So don't even think of trying to visit. We're gonna start off the list with a recent UFO sighting in Middletown. So in June of 2023, a number of residents reported seeing strange lights in the sky over town. The lights were in a circular formation, rotating. A man named Caden Little managed to capture the weird lights on video. We see them hovering in place, rotating in a counterclockwise direction before flying off at such an amazing speed that if you blink, it just looks like they've vanished completely. President of the Cincinnati Astronomical Society, Brian Simpson, looked at the footage, saying that the lights definitely weren't from a drone based on the speed at which they flew out of sight. I think this is a pretty cool piece of footage, but what do you guys think? Genuine hoax? Leave your thoughts down in the comments. And while you're at it, why not hit that subscribe button as well? Here's a creepy piece of footage from TikTok. A couple was hiking at night in Ohio when they pulled out their camera to film this pair of eyes peeking out at them from the tree line. At first, they thought it was a deer, but at one point they realized really doesn't seem to be a deer. Something about the way the eyes are moving and the fact that deers rarely decide to follow people. I really want nothing to do with human beings. So it becomes pretty clear that there's something else tailing them. Now, we never get to see the creature in full. It lurks in the shadows the entire time. But some commenters have said it kind of moves like a big cat. Others have commented it could be the Ohio Grassman or Dogman. Whether this was a cryptid or a predatory animal, Either would be terrifying. Eventually, the couple wisely decides to hurry out of there. The small village of Sabina once had something of a mascot, a very macabre mascot. It was a mummy. So in 1929, an African-American man in his mid to late 40s was found dead on a road near Sabina. No ID, just a dollar forty in cash and a scrap of paper with an address that turned out to be a vacant lot in Cincinnati. The authorities had no idea who this guy was, so they went with the name Eugene. Eugene the Mummy was taken to Sabina's Littleton funeral home and embalmed. They put him in a brick shed by a bus stop, thinking maybe someone would recognize him during the 30-day viewing period. But no luck. Uh, folks in Sabina got kind of attached to their new resident, though. They cleaned him up, they changed his clothes, uh, things got really weird though when local kids started playing with him and like moving him around, uh, even swiping his gold teeth. Teenagers would even take the poor guy out on joy rides. The mummy ended up being taken to Ohio State University and was placed on a bench outside the school to like scare students. The Littleton Funeral Home got wind of this and Eugene was sent back to Sabina and at this point it was clear the guy needed to be buried. Eugene got a plot in the local cemetery complete with a stone. That says he was found dead in 1929, buried 1964. His identity is still a complete mystery. Next up, we have the case of the Peninsula Python. I think this is one of my favorite stories to come out of Ohio. Uh, it's not often that a massive sized wild python ends up roaming through a middle American state, but in one magical summer in Ohio, that's exactly what happened. In the summer of 1944, 
Something strange happened in Summit County, Ohio, near the Cuyahoga Valley National Park. People started reporting sightings of a massive python about 15 feet long and incredibly thick. Now, at first, authorities didn't take these reports seriously, thinking it might be a hoax or some kind of wild exaggeration. As it turned out, though, what could have gone down is just another one of Ohio's many urban legends turned out to actually be very real. The residents were not making it up. Somehow a large python was let loose. No one could explain how the snake ended up in Ohio, but there it was. During that summer, the residents were terrified as the enormous snake roamed through farms, leaving behind indentations the size of giant tires. To make matters worse, the python even attacked livestock. I mean, of course it did, right? Authorities spent the whole summer hunting this thing down, but it was never found. It just disappeared eventually. Most likely it died from exposure during the harsh Ohio winter. Next up is the Crosswick Monster Case. This was a very well-documented case at the time and is one of the strangest stories ever to come out of the state of Ohio. Just saying a lot. So in 1882, two boys, Ed and Joe Lynch, had a really terrifying encounter with a strange creature in a field. They heard strange noises from tall grass and before they could react, they said they saw this large lizard-like beast with four legs come out of them. The creature approached the two, grabbed Ed in its jaws, and started dragging him towards a hollowed out tree. Ed's screams ended up catching the attention of nearby men who rushed over to help. They managed to rescue Ed, but he was injured. After the incident, 60 men armed themselves with axes and clubs, and they formed a posse to hunt down this thing. They caught up with it and the creature then stood on its hind legs. The chase led them to a hill of rocks where the creature escaped into a hole, never to be seen again. The local newspaper reported the story at the time and it's since become a staple of Ohio's folklore. And I could see why, I mean, a lot of folks saw this thing that day. The exact nature of the creature, still a total mystery. So yeah, I, I don't know, I just love that story. Anytime there's like a multiple people who see something, that just uh, it, it makes it far more interesting for me. Next is another UFO case. This is the Trumbull County incident. This was a series of events where numerous residents reported seeing these unusual lights in the sky. Even police officers reported seeing things. Multiple residents reported sightings of odd lights in the night sky, describing them as bright and unusual aerial activities. Officer Toby Maloro was on duty that night. He was dispatched to investigate reported lights, and he was driving closer and closer to the source of these lights, keeping contact with the dispatcher, describing what he saw in real time. And at one point, radio communication was suddenly cut off, and his vehicle stopped. Maloro then became engulfed in a bright light from above. He got out of his vehicle for some reason to get a better view, and reported seeing this massive circular object hovering in the sky. One of the strangest parts about his description of these events is that even though this thing was massive, it was almost completely silent. After a period of time, the object began to move away, and just as the craft moved off, his car and radio started working again. It's a pretty fascinating case, not just because of the detailed account made by Officer Malero, but all the corroborating reports from other residents as well. Now, a corroborated UFO case is one thing, but mass amounts of people frantically phoning into the police claiming to witness a large mutated octopus man? That is a whole other story. Very wild case right here. So the Octoman case. This unfolded on the 29th of January, 1959 in Cincinnati. It was a series of reports to the local cops about a bizarre octopus-like creature. The first report came from a man who urgently contacted police. He had a hard time describing what he was seeing because no one's ever seen a mutated octopus man before. And then a truck driver phoned up saying he'd encountered an unusual creature while driving into Cincinnati. Reports then just kept flooding in. The common thread with these calls is that people apparently sounded genuinely distressed. The creature was described as very large and had grayish skin uh, tentacle-like appendages, and a lopsided chest. Not sure exactly what that means, but I don't know, just maybe kind of like hunched, hunchback kind of. One witness provided a more detailed account, stating it was large. Not a dog or a cat, it leaped in front of my car 
on two legs and was taller than the auto. When I looked back in my mirror, it was moving along the bridge rail. It was three or four times the size of a man and much bulkier. I have an eye in mind for dimensions, and I know it was huge. If I ever had the opportunity to go back in time, like forget going to Woodstock or anything like that, I'd just be like, take me to Cincinnati, Ohio, January 29th, 1959. I just want to know what everyone saw that night. Like, was it just a guy with a horrible deformity? Was there just something weird in the air that night? Or was there a freaking octopus creature roaming around that bridge? I, I desperately want to know. The Cedar Bog Monster. So the Cedar Bog Monster is just one of Ohio's many variations of Bigfoot. Back in the 50s, people started spreading stories about a creature hanging out in the Cedar Bog Nature Preserve. It was described as a large, hairy figure standing around seven feet tall, with eyes that shined in the dark, and a not-so-pleasant odor. One of the most famous sightings was from a couple who had parked near the bog. They spotted the huge, hairy creature strolling along Woodburn Road, which runs right beside the bog. They hightailed it out of there, of course, and reported the incident to the police. And there would be more and more accounts being reported. People started saying they were hearing strange noises in the woods, like grunts and howls. Some would find massive-sized footprints. Local news even featured the Cedar Bog Monster in a headline. Now, what I wonder is, if this thing really did exist, is it a different creature than the Grassman and Orange Eyes and like all these other big hairy creatures? roaming around Ohio, or are these folks seeing the same creature or species of creature? These are the important questions you have to ask yourself. Another one of Ohio's strangest cases is the Werewolf of Defiance sighting. So in the summer of 1972, on the Norfolk and Western Railway in Defiance, two railroad workers, Ted Davis and Tom Jones, experienced a bizarre and unsettling event that would later be dubbed the Werewolf of Defiance case. It all began with Ted Davis, who while working away on the railroad, saw something otherworldly. He reported seeing a large wolf-like creature. The creature actually held a wooden board in its paws, and without warning, it swung the board, striking Ted squarely on the shoulder. The creature then hastily retreated into the bushes like a coward. Five days later, Ted and his coworker Tom Jones returned to the railway for another day of work. For some reason, they didn't quit after that first encounter. Sure enough, the creature shows up again, and this time it was actually a safe distance away from the two, uh, and Ted and Tom then reported their encounters to the local police. Little did they know that their report was just the beginning of a wave of Wolfman sightings in the area. Other reports started flooding in, each detailing sightings of this menacing wolf monster, but reports started to trickle out by the end of that summer. So, did people hear about that first report and just want attention? Was the whole thing a big hoax? Once again, I'd really love to go back in time and just, just hide by that railway to watch the whole thing play out. Finally, we have the case of the Minerva monster. Back in 1978, folks in Minerva started talking about a hairy creature running around in the woods. A big, hairy, unknown beast. People claimed it was about seven feet tall, had reddish brown hair, and looked like a giant ape. Yes, another giant ape in Ohio. There are many. It all started when the Caton family saw this monster near a gravel pit outside their house, and they saw it on more than one occasion. One night they saw it peering at them through their window. It would also curl rocks at their home. A real awful creature. It scared the living daylights out of them. Of course, they even said it smelled bad, like a mix of skunk and a wet dog. Not exactly a pleasant combo. Authorities were contacted and they came to investigate, but all that was left behind were large footprints around the family's property, leading back into the woods. A number of other residents also made reports about a similar creature around the same time, including the Kate's neighbor. It's still a complete mystery, though, as to what this thing was. Coming in at number 10 is the Melon Heads. It said if you drive through Lake County, Ohio late at night and happen to see something that resembles a pack of people with huge heads staring at you from the tall grass, you may have stumbled across the Melon Heads of Ohio. Allegedly, the government ran a number of experiments, which eventually left a group of humans with heads swell to enormous sizes. Now, obviously, the government found little to do with these now deformed people, so the story goes that they got dumped off in the woods near Kirtland 
Cleveland, Ohio, not far from Cleveland. But because every story gets retold, more paranormal theories have been proposed about the melon heads. Some believe them to be the ghosts of young subjects who burned to death in a cabin fire. Now it's said that they were subjected to tests by a man named Dr. Crow, whose work caused their heads to inflate to their larger size. Now, regardless of their origins, the melon heads get sighted most at Windsor Road, where many high schoolers go and attempt to witness them firsthand. Now, to me, that sounds absolutely terrifying, and if I ever go to Ohio, I will be avoiding that area come. Completely. Number 8. The Butcher of Kingsbury Run The Butcher of Kingsbury Run was an identified serial slayer who was active in Cleveland, Ohio in the 1930s. The deaths are characterized by the dismemberment of 13 known victims and the disposal of their remains in the impoverished neighborhood of Kingsbury Run. Now, Most victims came from an area east of Kingsbury Run called the Roaring Third or Hobo Jungle, known for its bars, gambling, dens, brothels, and vagrants. Now, Many of the victims remained unidentified to this day, and despite an investigation of the deaths, which at one time was led by famed lawman Elliot Ness, then Cleveland's public safety director, the criminal responsible was never apprehended. Now, recent speculation suggests that the butcher may have traveled west and was also responsible for the death of Elizabeth Short of the Black Dahlia murder case. Number 7. The Circleville Letter Writer In the 1970s, residents of a small town of Circleville and Pickaway County started receiving personal, mysterious letters about their lives. Now, the letters were written in block style and contained vindictive, violent, and often vulgar material. School bus driver Mary Glipsy became the main target of the letters. The writer accused Mary, who was married, to having an affair with a married school superintendent, Gordon Massey. Now, the letters sent to Mary didn't stop and they became increasingly threatening. Her husband, Ronald Glipsy, began receiving them too. Then, in August 1977, Ronald died and it was unknown whether the death was accidental or a homicide, but it was believed the letters were related to his death. The letters continued even after a suspect was placed in prison, and the letters continued to arrive in residences' mailboxes, both city officials and average citizens alike, until the late 90s. The writer was never revealed, and it remains an Ohio mystery to this day. Number 6. The Legend of Elizabeth's Grave This infamous legend starts at Mount Union Pleasant Valley Cemetery, one of the most haunted cemeteries in Ohio. The rural cemetery is home to the chilling Elizabeth grave. Now there are two major stories to Elizabeth's legend. In the first, Elizabeth, overcome with grief over the death of her husband, hanged herself from a tree near the rear of the cemetery in which her husband was buried. In another variation, Elizabeth had her life ended in a similar manner by several men angry over her inheritance upon her husband's death. Now in both legends, the story goes that Elizabeth was buried near the front of the cemetery. However, her tombstone mysteriously moves itself to the back of the cemetery near the location of her death most often against the very tree from which she hung. When replaced, it would always wander back to the rear of the cemetery. Now that's not all, it's rumored that Elizabeth still walks the cemetery, often seen in a white dress. A few people claim that apparitions of Elizabeth are accompanied by the apparitions of two shadowy men dressed in all black. Sometimes she's seen hanging from the tree where she lost her life, and some even say that on the anniversary of her death, blood drips from the tree in question. Number 5. Eugene the Mummy An African American man in his mid to late 40s was found dead from natural charges on a road near Sabina in Ohio. He was alone and without identification, believed to be a wanderer in search of a job. Townspeople claimed to have seen him walking in town the day before, appearing to be ill. The only things in his pocket were $1.40 and a slip of paper with the address 1118 Yale Avenue, Cincinnati. Upon investigation, authorities arrived at the address only to find a vacant lot. The identity of the man was still a complete mystery so they decided that the name of a nearby neighbor, Eugene, would work for the time being, at least until they figured out who he was. This man, now named Eugene, was brought to Sabina's Littleton funeral home and embalmed. They then set the mummified man in a brick shed near a bus stop so that people could come by and identify the body. Now, The typical 30 day period of viewing passed with no luck, but pretty soon though, Eugene became a permanent resident of Sabina. He just sat there on the side of the road for years. Now the town loved what they called their town mascot, and Eugene had a couch to rest on, was dusted and cleaned, and his clothes were changed when they got dingy. Over a period of 
35 years, it is estimated that Sabina's mummy man was viewed by 1.5 million people, but he's still never been identified. Now I'm sorry, I can't believe they were able to do that. That is sick. Number 4. Moonville Tunnel Located deep in the woods, the Moonville Tunnel is framed by faded stone archways covered in moss. Now the tunnel itself is long and extremely dark, and it's actually an out of work stretch of railroad track that leads to an old cold mining town, and of course, it's haunted. Now, the most infamous Moonville ghost story originated in 1880 when engineer Theodore Lawhead was driving a train down the dark, desolate tracks from Cincinnati to Moretta when another train unexpectedly collided with his. This was apparently a train dispatcher's mistake, and Theodore and a fireman died instantly. As early as 1895, ghost stories about a figure thought to be Theodore holding a bright white lantern with a flowing white beard, eyes that glistened like balls of fire, and a halo of twinkling stars would appear and just as quickly disappear. In addition to the engineer, Moonville is supposedly haunted by a railway brakeman who looms in the tunnel, a woman who smells like lavender, and a bully named Baldy Keaton who has been known to throw rocks and tease people. Number 3. Beaver Creek State Park This park is special because of its history of being a canal system in the 1800s with locks that still remain in the park. One of them, called Jake's Lock, is said to be haunted by Jake, a canal worker who was struck by lightning while walking across the top. Many other legends exist within the park, including the tale of Esther Hale, known as the Bride of the Bridge. On the morning of her wedding, someone was sent to check on the groom to find that his house was empty and he was never seen again. Esther, grieving for months wondering what happened to her soon-to-be husband, was then found dead in her home. According to the book Haunted Ohio II, it's said by the locals that you can still see her dressed in white, looking for her bridegroom on the bridge over Beaver Creek. She waits there every year on August 12th, a hideous figure in tattered white satin and lace, and if she touches you, she will become young and beautiful again, but you will die. Number 2. Malabar Farm Malabar Farm was built in 1939 by Pulitzer Prize winning author Lewis Broomfield, and it was his home until his death in 1956. But before it was built, another family lived there in the 19th century. Celia Rose, who lived there, was said to be half child and half woman, according to an 1896 newspaper article. Now, she was in fact with a boy named Guy Barry who lived in a neighboring farmhouse. They saw each other every day, but her parents told her to stay away from him. Now she, didn't, now she didn't like that and got angry at them, so she mixed rat poison in their porridge. Her father and brother died, but her mother survived. She was found not guilty by reason of insanity and went to live with her mother. Seely then poisoned her again, and this time it worked. At age 23, Seely stood trial, truly alone, but was found not guilty by reason of insanity and sent to a state hospital. She lived out the rest of her life at an insane asylum, and since then the house has been haunted. One visitor saw a woman dressed like Celie Rose outside the house, people have seen lights flicker, felt a phantom cat, disembodied voices are heard, and there's an overall eerie feeling on the property. And we're starting off this list today with the Werewolf of Defiance. It's uh, the summer of 1972. Two railroad workers were hard at work on the Norfolk and Western Railway when all of a sudden, one of them, Ted Davis, looked up to see a large wolf-like creature with a wooden board grasped between its paws, which it then whacked the man in the shoulder with before turning off into the bushes to run away like a like a coward. Five days later, Ted and his co-worker Tom Jones returned to the railway for another day's work, hoping they wouldn't be seeing the big furry monster again. Only they did. Only this time it was a bit of a safe distance away. Not that I'd ever feel a safe distance away from a werewolf, but that's just me. And then they reported the sightings to the police. Right around this time, more and more wolfman sightings began piling in, and locals began to panic about the potential of being mauled by a six foot tall werewolf. Imagine actually like feeling that that was a possibility. Like you're heading out of the grocery store and you're like, damn, like really hope I don't run into a lycanthrope today. That's their life apparently in Ohio. Up next we have the Loveland Frog. This mysterious creature has been reported to have been sighted in Loveland, Ohio. The amphibious creature is said to resemble a bipedal frog standing upright on its hind legs measuring up to four feet tall. Not that big, but pretty big for a frog though. Got leathery skin, webbed fingers and toes, you all know how frogs look, and it's also got those iconic glowing large eyes. The first reported sighting of the Loveland 
Loveland frog was in 1955 when a man claimed to have seen three of them on the side of the road holding some kind of strange wand like device. Again, only in Ohio would you spot three large frogs practicing magic under a bridge. I, I really gotta visit Ohio sometimes. It just seems like such a fantastical place. Again, Narnia got nothing on Ohio. Anyway, since that initial 1955 sighting, there have been several other ones, including one by a police officer in 1972, who reported seeing a creature fitting the description of the Loveland frog scuttling across the road and then hopping over the guardrail into the little Miami River. Another officer even claimed to have shot at the creature, but it escaped. Some people believe the Loveland frog is an escaped exotic pet or mutated frog, while others speculate that it is a supernatural type of creature. And number seven, it's Bessie. The Bessie Lake Monster, or the Lake Erie Monster. It's a legendary creature that is said to inhabit Lake Erie. The creature is described as a, a big, similar in appearance to Loch Ness Monster, kinda long-necked, humpback, as well as a serpentine kind of dinosaur-like body. The first reported sighting of Bessie dates back to 1973, when a duck hunter saw a large serpentine-like creature thrashing in the lake and startled by his gunshots. And since then, numerous sightings have been reported over the years. Some eyewitnesses claim to have seen the creature swimming close to their boats or even on the shore, while others have reported hearing strange, eerie sounds coming from the water. Despite many attempts attempts to capture or study the creature. There is no concrete evidence of its existence. However, the legend of Bessie persists and many people believe that there is something mysterious lurking beneath the surface of Lake Erie. When it comes, you know, when it comes to creatures that reside in the water, I also, I gotta say, it seems plausible. We don't, we don't spend a lot of time underwater, you know? Lots could be lurking in those murky depths. You never know. Number six, Mothman of Gallia County. Most of us have probably heard of the infamous Mothman. Large, winged, glowing red eyes. It was first reported in West Virginia in 1966, but one of the most famous sightings of this large flying insect was over the Silver Bridge that connected Point Pleasant, West Virginia to the village of Gallipolis, Ohio. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but I think it's Gallipolis. This sighting happened just a year after the first reported Mothman sighting, and right around the time when the creature was spotted on the Silver Bridge, it collapsed. And some still believe that this mysterious cryptid was the one responsible. There have also been reported Mothman sightings before other big disasters, which has led some to speculate as to whether Mothman is a bad omen or if it is simply appears as kind of like a warning of impending doom, bad or good. Orange eyes. Now, this is a uh, Sasquatch type creature that could very well be the same type of creature as a couple others we'll be discussing on the list. There are many Sasquatch variations seen throughout Ohio, but this one is famous for, as you could probably imagine, it's got these glowing orange eyes. There have been reports of strange creatures with orange eyes lurking in Ohio, said to reside in the Riverside Cemetery before moving to the woods by Mill Lake. Witnesses described the creature as resembling a large bipedal humanoid with a muscular build and a hunched posture. Its eyes, once again, seem to emit an otherworldly glow. The creature is reportedly very fast and agile Agile and has been known to vanish into thin air when pursued. Some locals believe that Orange Eyes is a Bigfoot type creature, but there are also those theories that maybe a kind of supernatural being or extraterrestrial entity as well. And number four, we have Dogman. Most Dogman reports come out of Michigan, but there have been sightings in Ohio as well. According to witnesses, the Dogman is a bipedal wolf-like creature that stands between six and seven feet tall with a muscular build and a snarling dog-like face. The first reported sightings of the Dogman in Ohio occurred in the late 1980s. Since then, there have been numerous other sightings reported in the state. Witnesses have reported seeing the creature hunting in the woods, stalking prey, and even running across highways at high speeds. Some skeptics believe that the sightings, of course, may be misidentifications of known animals like bears or wolves, while others believe that the Dogman is a real undiscovered species that is yet to be officially documented by science. Number three, the Crosswick Monster. Now, there's only one report of this cryptid, but it's, it's quite the entertaining tale. It's like something out of a classic 1950s monster movie or something like that. 
and it's, it's a pretty famous piece of Ohio cryptid folklore. The story goes that in 1882, two boys, Ed and Joe Lynch, began hearing strange sounds coming from the tall grass of a bush behind them. They were fishing, and then before they had time to think, a large four-legged lizard creature popped out from the bushes and began making its way toward them. The boys tried to make their escape, but it caught the 13-year-old Ed in its mouth and began dragging him towards a large hollowed out tree. Three men had heard the boys screaming and managed to make it to Ed's aid before he was pulled into the tree, although he was badly injured. A group of like about 60 men were formed armed with axes and clubs and they tried to slay the beast but the creature managed to escape, actually standing on its hind legs at one point. It's pretty horrifying. The group chased the creature which retreated into a hole under a large hill of rocks. The creature was never seen again. Described as black and white in color and roughly 12 feet in length. Number two, the Minerva Monster. This has to be one of the most famous Sasquatch sightings in Ohio. In August of 1978, in the village of Minerva, the first sighting of the creature was reported by the Caton family, who had seen a large hairy creature in the gravel pit outside of their property, looking to be about 300 pounds. It soon became known as the Minerva Monster and terrorized the Caton family on more than one occasion. They described seeing it peering through their kitchen window one night, awful, and when police came to investigate, they saw large footprints around their home with a terrible smell lingering in the air. The creature was also reported to have thrown rocks at their home one day, and they even reported seeing two large hairy bipeds on a hill by the strip mine near their property. The family has been adamant about what they saw ever since, and their story has remained consistent. It wasn't just the Catons who had run-ins with the large ape-like creature, though. Other locals began reporting seeing a similar creature in and around the Minerva area around the same time. And that's going to bring us to our number one spot, the Ohio Grassman. There's a, a very good chance that the Minerva monster and orange eyes are the very same creature I'm describing here, as they're all big, all furry, ape-like creatures. Grassman is pretty much Ohio's nickname for Bigfoot, described as a large, hairy, bipedal creature standing between seven and nine feet tall. Grassman is said to have human-like face and a muscular build. Witnesses have reported hearing eerie vocalizations and howls coming from the woods, as well as seeing large footprints that they believe belong to the creature. The first reported sightings of the Ohio Grassman occurred in the late 1800s, but the creature gained widespread attention in the 1970s when multiple sightings were reported in the state. Since then, there have been numerous other sightings reported in the area. While some skeptics dismiss the sightings, of course, as misidentifications of you know animals or even hoaxes, others believe that the Grassman is real and he's an undiscovered species. So I don't know. What do you think? As always. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. At number 10 is the Gore Orphanage. There's this place called the Gore Orphanage in Ver Vermillion? Vermillion? Vermillion. I'm not from Ohio, I don't know. Vermillion, and it's got a spooky reputation that's been hanging around for ages. Picture this, back in the early 1900s, a gnarly house fire burnt down this building and it's game over for everyone inside. Now, the story goes that the ghosts of these poor souls are still lurking around, both in the building and in the woods nearby. People who've dared to venture there have reported some wild stuff, like laughter and cries echoing place. But here's where it gets even crazier. It was a satanic cult spot where they did some messed up rituals, while others think it's just a messed up orphanage with no supernatural vibes. Now, I gotta say, that there's no hard evidence to back up these claims, but the legend lives on, my friends. Ghost hunters and paranormal buffs keep rolling in even though it's a no-go zone because it's technically private property. So, you know, spooky stuff happens in Ohio too. At number 9, the Spring Grove Cemetery. Cemeteries are like a magnet for spooky stuff, and the Spring Grove Cemetery in Cincinnati, Ohio is no exception. It's like the second biggest cemetery in the whole US of A, which is like prime real estate for ghostly shenanigans. One story that stands out is about this dude named C.C. Brewer, who was like an optometrist. Before he kicked the bucket, however, he was all, yo, take my eyes out and stick them on my gravestone. But relax, because they're not real eyes, just some glass ones. But people swear those fake eyes follow them around like a creepy optical illusion. And then there's this caretaker who was all alone one night, and something tugged at his pants. The dude freaked out and bolted, and came back later thinking he'd find, like, a, sna a snake or something, but nope, just graves. 
If you're enjoying the video so far, you could support the channel by subscribing to Most Amazing and ringing that notification bell. At number seven is the Hook Man. This spine-tingling Ohio legend in the village of New Richmond. He's a ghastly figure with a hook for a hand. Yeah, the classic hook-handed ghost story, but Ohio's got its own twist on it. There's this doctor and his wife living on Pond Run Road. They had a mentally disturbed son locked up in the basement most of the time. And one stormy night, lightning strikes their house, turning it into an inferno. When the authorities show up, their parents are toast, but no sign of the boy, just a severed hand chained to the wall. Creepy, right? Now the boy grows up lurking the woods, stealing from nearby homes. Couples end up unalived, and folks think it's the hook man's doing. Classic stuff like a couple making out in the car, hearing a weird noise, and the guy decides to investigate, but bam! Hook to the cranium. At number six, the Coin Mansfield incident. So picture this, it's 1973 in Mansfield, Ohio, and you've got these four National Guard dudes just chilling in a helicopter doing their thing. But then, out of nowhere, bam, they spot this massive metallic frisbee looking thing up in the sky. I mean, UFO alert. These guys aren't your average UFO spotters though. They're trained military pilots, so they know their stuff. And guess what? This mysterious disc isn't just hanging out. It starts creeping towards them. Panic mode actually. Activated. They dodge and weave, but the UFO just won't quit. It's like playing tag with an ET, but way less fun. They report the whole shebang, and even the military and the FAA think it's legit. Radar data and ground witnesses back up their story too. But here's the kicker. Nobody can explain what the heck that thing was. UFO or not, it's a spine tingling story that's, that still haunts Ohio's history. At number two is Unalived Man's Curve in Cleveland. Back in 1969, a car full of teens smashed into a speeding 1969 Roadrunner, leaving just one survivor. But that's not even the creepiest part. At the intersection of state routes 125 and, 20, and 222, where this tragic accident happened, there have been some spine tingling sightings. People claim they've seen a faceless hitchhiker lurking there between 120 and 140 in the dead of night. Sometimes this ghostly figure stands in the middle of the road, causing drivers to swerve dangerously. And get this, if you don't dodge him in time, witnesses say he'll phase right through your car and start chasing it down the road before disappearing into thin air. But wait, there's more. Some folks say they've spotted either an Impala or a road runner cruising down along the road with no one in the driver's seat. It's one of Claremont County's most haunted spots, so if you visit, remember to keep your eyes on the road if you dare. Number nine, Bigfoot Howls. In this video uploaded by We Do It Outdoors, we see our cameraman roaming through a forest in Lore City, Ohio. The sun is starting to set, and we hear a series of strange eerie howls and tree knocks. We Do It Outdoors seems to have started as a channel about maintaining lawns, but uh, over the last few years, there have been a number of Bigfoot related videos uploaded on there. One of which I may or may not be discussing later in the list. And whether they're real or not, some of them are pretty entertaining. We get some genuinely creepy sounds in this video. It definitely sounds like something or someone is howling in the distance. If I heard sounds like this while I was in the forest, I'd, I'd just turn right around immediately. This guy sticks around until it's like fully dark, and the sounds just get louder and louder. Real or not, it's definitely a creepy video. Number eight, the Jefferson County Report. Next up, I have another report detailed on the Bigfoot Field Researchers website. This incident was reported in July of 2021, still pretty recent, in Jefferson County, Ohio. A man describes finding a large footprint in his chicken coop, as well as all of his chickens having gone missing. He's quoted saying, on July 9th at approximately 10 a.m., I noticed my five chickens were missing. The chicken coop was full of feathers, but no bodies or blood. I did a perimeter check and came across an extremely large footprint. I went back to the house and brought down a tape measure to the footprint and measured it and took pictures with the tape measure beside it. The footprint measured a length that was apparently 18 inches with a width of about 9 to 10 inches. A, a Bigfoot investigator named Jim Thompson came to investigate the man's property and discovered more footprints that were about 4 feet apart from one another. That's about double the gait of an average person, by the way. On July 24th, a couple weeks after making his initial report, the man described hearing strange 
strange yelps coming from either end of his property as if they were yelping back and forth to each other. And he also said that on some nights he gets an eerie feeling that something is watching him. I have that almost every night too. At number seven, we have Susan Ferenczak. Suzanne Ferenczak is a former skeptic turned Bigfoot enthusiast. After spotting a strange hairy creature near her home in Loudonville, Ohio, she had first spotted what she described as a big black furred creature jump over the road. Not sure where said road was exactly or what type of road it was. If it was a highway road, that would be nuts. It was just a small dirt road. Still scary, not quite as impressive though. Suzanne has recorded audio of what she believes to be a Sasquatch while out in the wilderness near her home and has shared the two minute clip online. I gave it a listen. The quality, not great, but it's, uh, it's definitely eerie. You hear this distant howling. It definitely doesn't sound like a wolf. You also get some classic, you know, whoops in there too, which a lot of Bigfoot researchers describe Sasquatches, you know, making. Whether it's a genuine uh, Bigfoot or not, I really just dig supposed Bigfoot audio. I, I just imagine being out alone in the woods at night and hearing some distant wail and whooping and human or not. I mean, it would it'd be pretty bone chilling. All right, now I'm gonna share the last report from the Bigfoot Field Researchers Organization, at least for this video anyway, there are tons on the site. This one was reported in Mahoning County, Ohio in July of 2021. Sorry if I'm messing up the pronunciation there. A man had described seeing a strange creature one evening after returning home with his wife and is quoted as saying, tonight, yet another sighting by our pond. My wife and I were at dinner and as we arrived home about eight 30 p.m. A large, fast, gray and silver, light brown, covered in fur, Bigfoot darted from the bushes in our front into the cattails in our pond on all fours. We both looked at each other and said, did you just see that? The subject was down low and bent in the middle as, as it moved. Unlike a dog, its undulating movement was not as fluid as a dog. It was not a bear. It appeared to be from four to five feet at the back and torso built like a barrel. When it went into the cattails, we were no longer able to see it. Number five, the 1992 Grassman sighting. Grassman uh, is again the name often given to the big ape-like creature or creatures that so many Ohio locals have spotted. And in this video taken in Eastern Ohio in 1992 by a man named Don Keating, he had spotted what looked like a large hairy creature walking into the forest. He managed to capture it on camera. And though the footage is very grainy and he, he was a fair distance away from it, there is definitely something, something walking into the forest. It's, it's not the most convincing video evidence. It's hard to tell what you're looking at, but I do always find uh, something eerie about old 90s VHS footage, and Keating seems to believe he saw some kind of large cryptid, so. This video was featured on Monster Quest and features an interview with Keating describing what he saw and that he was a skeptic before this encounter. I always like it when they say there were skeptics before, because, you know, it's just, it's a bit more convincing that way. At number four, we have the famous Minerva Monster case. Back in 1970, a family living in Minerva, Ohio, reported what they believed to be a large Bigfoot-esque cryptid around their home. The Caton family reported rocks being thrown at their home by the creature and would spot large footprints in their backyard. But there are other reports of a mysterious creature in the area around the same time. The Caton's neighbor also spotted the big hairy creature as well as other residents of the area. The case became known as the Minerva Monster Case and gained rather significant media attention at the time. A former Stark County Sheriff named Jim Shannon, who had responded to one of the Caton family's uh, reports, is quoted as saying, they were terrified. I will always believe them. They saw something. It's just, what? did they see? This case has become the subject of a 2015 documentary called Minerva Monster, directed by Seth Breedlove, who we might be talking about in a bit. Next up, we have Mark DeWorth. Mark DeWorth is a Ohio Bigfoot investigator who has collected a fair amount of evidence in the 30 years he's spent on the hunt. He's got footprints, audio recordings, and of course, his first-hand encounter, which was the catalyst for his research. The story is he'd been exploring an old strip mine in 
search of badger dens, was followed out by something which soon stood up and looked at him, a big, bipedal, hairy creature. If that happened to me, I would not go looking for the creature again. I would move out of Ohio the next morning, probably. The thought of an eight-foot tall, hairy beast roaming through the woods has always been kind of creepy to me, but having one stare at you in a cave? Imagine looking through a cave thinking all you're gonna see that day is maybe some badgers, and then you're met with an eight-foot tall, hairy ape man glaring at you. Only I'm allowed to find badgers in this cave. Whether the story is true or not, definitely a terrifying image. A video shared by Spectrum News shows Mark talking to several residents of Warren County, Ohio about his experience with this elusive creature, as well as hearing some of their first-hand accounts. He plays an audio recording, which sounds, again, pretty creepy. I love me some Bigfoot audio recordings. Anyway, Mark DeWirth has been interviewed on tons of podcasts discussing his Sasquatch experiences. So uh, seek those out if you're interested. And at number two, we have the Seth Breedlove Encounter. Seth Breedlove is a filmmaker who's gone on to shoot a series called The Bigfoot Project, which you can find on a YouTube channel called Small Town Monsters. Before he had his first encounter, Seth described himself as a skeptic. In a YouTube video uploaded by Ed Ballant, Seth recounts the time he first encountered what he believes to be a Bigfoot. Seth had been riding down the countryside of Minerva, Ohio when he spotted what looked to be a large bipedal creature with brown hair running through a clearing on a hill about 50 yards away. And it was fast, clearing the space in less than a second. One of the things that really stuck out to Seth most was the creature's very noticeable musculature, especially in the bicep area. Listening to uh, Seth talk, he doesn't sound like he genuinely believes what he saw. He doesn't seem like he's making anything up on the spot or anything. Thing. Whether it was indeed the missing link or something more benign, he definitely did see something. And coming in at our number one spot is the salt fork footage. This video, once again, uploaded by the YouTube channel, We Do It Outdoors, is only 10 minutes long, but there's there's a lot going on with this one. Uh, so two men were exploring Salt Fork State Park in Eastern Ohio, and after hearing some strange noises, they happened to capture footage of what looks to be a large bipedal hairy animal. We have a few different pieces of evidence in this video. We have handheld footage of the creature moving through the trees. We have some drone footage, lots of sounds too. It's a very meaty video. Now, could it be a big guy in a suit? Look, it can always be a big guy in a suit, but I gotta say, if it is a suit, it's not a bad one. It's pretty good. It looks like it has some bulk to it. It doesn't look like just one of those generic gorilla suits you can pick up at Spirit Halloween. And what I like here is that the footage is clear. He's not relying on shaking the camera around or making the video extra grainy to try and obscure the image. And just for those reasons alone, I like this video, even if it isn't real. We also hear some vocalizations going on here. So like I said, it's just a lot happening. Check this one out over at We Do It Outdoors. And building. The Bisman Building was built in 1886, and fun fact, the film Shawshank Redemption used this place as a filming location. If you have seen the film, the building is used as the entrance to the Brewer Hotel, where Brooks and Red stayed after they were paroled from Shawshank. The real building, though, is haunted. While here, many people experience a feeling of dread and sadness, particularly on the third floor. Many people also report an overwhelming sense sensation of darkness when on this floor, so if I were you, I would just stay away from the third floor in general. Disembodied footsteps, voices being poked and pushed, black shadows and dark figures caught in images seems to be something that happens a lot. Spirits of a young girl Ruthie, her aunt, and the spirit of a retired worker who died in an accident before leaving the building are three identified spirits that stay here. In past investigations here, investigators have received audible responses to their questions. Yep, the ghosts spoke to them. One piece of audio evidence was when an investigator asked if they could speak to Ruthie, and a voice was caught saying, is Ruthie here? In addition to Ruthie, people have witnessed the spirit of a woman throughout the upper floors, people in Victorian clothing, and the sounds of people working. Number 9. Staley Road Sometime in the early 1800s, pioneer John Wrench used the services of three Staley brothers to build 
build a flour mill. The finished structure was to become the first double wheeled mill in Ohio. The business flourished and after several years, John had made enough money to retire and ended up selling his mill to Elias Daly. The mill was then passed down to his brother Andrew and continued to produce flour until 1905. Today, the mill is still standing and on Staley Road, named for the brothers, winds its way past and through the woods. It has become something of a rite of passage for local teens to drive this road at night to show how brave they are. It's been said that old man Staley went on a rampage ending the lives of many and is now haunting the road. Motorists say that they often experience unexplained car trouble and some have even seen Staley's ghost standing next to or even lying in the road. Number 8. The Golden Lamb As the oldest hotel in Ohio, the Golden Lamb has seen more than its share of famous guests, including Charles Dickens, Mark Twain, Daniel Webster, and 12 American presidents. Yeah. 12. It's fantastic, but there's also been death and tragedy in the hotel. Guests have cited a girl who may be Sarah Stubbs, the niece of the hotel manager in the 1800s, or possibly Eliza Clay, a girl who died of a high fever at the hotel in 1825. The ghost of Charles R. Sherman, an Ohio Supreme Court justice who died at the inn in 1929, is said to appear in the hallways as a gray, gaunt man and conjures the smell of cigar smoke. Charles's death left his wife wife and 11 children, including Civil War General William T. Sherman, penniless. As a result, most of his children were put up for adoption, and some say the guilt of his family's demise keeps his spirit at the end. Want to see more videos like this one? Check out this video next. It's about the creepiest glitches that Alexa has made, and yes, we're talking about the Alexa in your home. Viewer discretion advised. Don't forget to turn off your own Alexa. Click the video now and we'll see you guys in that next video. Thank you.